yoga is one of India's most well-known exports to the West. In Germany alone, nearly one in every six persons has practiced yoga at least once. So our guest today on the India to Germany podcast is Shankar Ramakrishnan, creator of the brand Yoga in Art. Yoga in Art sells art pieces about yoga on their web shop. In his day job, Shankar is an architect in Munich with a passion for art and architecture. He is also a graduate of the renowned Städel Schule architecture class in Frankfurt. Cast. Uh, thanks a lot, Paras. Thanks, for, thanks a lot for having me. It's it's great to meet another Indian who is uh, who is active in spreading good news and you know uh, inspirational news about uh, how Indians are and how they perform here abroad. You know, it's it's really nice to uh, nice to uh, nice to. Uh, talk with you on this yeah for me also it's it's great to have someone like you on the podcast um yeah i mean i saw the website for the brand that you have created yoga in art um, mm-hmm. on a first look it looked very impressive for me so i thought yeah that's why i should definitely speak to you and uh, yeah maybe you could just start by telling us a bit about what yoga in art is all about yeah Sure, sure. Uh, first of all, thanks a lot for having a look at the website. You know, it means a lot. You know, it's something like your work. You put it out there, and someone has a look at it and kind of gives back inputs and and you know comments and feels great. Uh, about about the whole idea of yoga and art, you know, like it's it's quite simple. It's yoga depicted in its art form. Uh, the idea was to capture yoga in its essence, in its true form, uh, in its true. Uh, you know, in its truest form possible. So uh, it's it's basically a digital media, a digital mixed media art series on yoga and yoga related topics. The idea was to create an art series for yoga lovers and also for art lovers. So the it's basically uh, an art where people could use uh, to kind of decorate their homes and office spaces and studio spaces. So this is what the uh, the whole uh, yoga and art brand is all about. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I saw the paintings uh, or I mean I saw the pieces of art and uh, they were very nice, very beautiful. I would like to have something like this for uh yeah, for my place as well someday. And I also really like this this kind of combination of yoga and art. I think it's a very very um yeah, harmonious sort of a combination I feel. Um yeah, and totally. I totally mean, hmm. Totally, totally. I mean, like, uh, I started yoga, I got introduced to yoga right at my young age, but uh, I really did not, uh, you know, did not, did not become a daily part of my life. But four or five years before, uh, you know, I really got introduced into yoga and um, uh, and it really took changed my life, you know. It became a part of my daily routine and I really enjoyed it, you know. And uh, coming from a country where it was uh, where yoga yoga's origin is from India, I really take huge pride in it, and it it's it, I'm really happy that it's been practiced all across the world, and you know everyone knows about the about the uh, about about yoga. So I mean, first of all, I'm I'm really happy that I come from a country where which which had its origin, and uh, in me being an art an artist uh, artist and um, architect, I really love human geometry, you know, human anatomy, and you know the kind of grace and uh, human geometry that one attains while doing yoga is really impressive, you know, it, it uh, the kind of impossible uh, geometrical forms that uh, you know you you get to do uh, when you perform yoga is, is something. Uh, something impressive and uh, and remarkable so uh, i wanted to kind of I, so i thought you know we need me being an artist i should really capture it you know and, and uh, create an art series out of it so that's that's how uh, the idea of it started and uh, i slowly started to uh, do uh, do one sketch a day try to develop a style over 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 a gap of 2 to 3 months and i finally finally found a style which was quite resonating within me and i felt okay yeah why not let's let's uh, have this as a concept and let's start working on it you know this is how the entire uh, idea kind of uh, formulated and took off all right okay and so like um, if we talk about a bit more about the business side of things so you had this idea at the beginning um, so 
how did you proceed further? What were the next uh, steps? I mean, I still don't have, I wouldn't say it as a, it as a business idea or anything because, I mean, it's just pure art, you know. I mean, um, so, so the idea was that uh, to first finish the art completely, the creative fun process, which I'm, which I enjoy a lot. I mean, that's, that's the core, you know, like what you do. So I never really gave a, uh, gave it a thought about it. Uh, it is a business idea or it's going to be an e-commerce platform or anything. I just thought, okay, let's create the art first. Mm -hmm. So I took like uh, the entire pandemic last year from March till, uh, till end of December was quite helpful, you know, to kind of give me the, give me the time and, you know, space and, you know, uh, to kind of dev work on my art and develop a really solid uh, artwork. So there are there are around 130, 140 art pieces that I developed in a gap of six to seven months, you know. And then the next was to catalog all these works into a into a good art series and to kind of name them properly uh, to make sure that you know um, I kind of got it perfectly in a, in a proper resolution and so on and so forth. So once I cataloged it, then I thought you know, uh, okay, now how do I do it? You know, now comes the business part of it. You know, anyone can do art, even if you scribble in a paper piece of paper and say it's art, it's art. You know, it's it's a, it's your creative side, but doing the um, you know putting your work out is the work out to the world and kind of getting feedback and response is the most difficult part of it. And being an artist and architect, we are, I'm just, I just don't have any exposure to it. So that's where the difficult part started off. And also being here in Germany, uh, being an expat here, nothing was easy. Uh, of course, my German is decent, but to kind of uh, get information about every single uh, thing about tax, setting up the tax, setting up your business account and, you know, uh, bank accounts and stuff like that was not uh, easy. So like it's, it was a lot of research online, um, trying my best uh, to kind of get in, uh, get in touch with uh, free consultations, you know, like uh, you get a free consultation with a tax advisor, you get a free consultation with, uh, you know, like if you want to find a company, how do you do it? There are a lot of other online platforms like firma.de and stuff, you know. So uh, there was a lot of uh, research which went through it to understand all of that. And the next part was how do I sell it online? You know, what platform do I use? So, you know, it's uh, the question was whether it's going to be an e-commerce platform or do I go and kind of talk with galleries where they sell my art and I get my commission. Uh, I somehow felt okay. It's it's a uh, being in the pandemic era. You know, it's um, uh, I mean everything is getting digital. It's it's really nice to have a have your own e-shop. Mm -hmm. you no, know, because everything is getting um, uh, what do you say? Everything is getting digital here in uh, here in Europe. You know, it's the pandemic has really accelerated the whole e-commerce uh, scenario. So yeah, that that kind of really gave me the uh, velocity and uh, and belief that okay, this would work out. You know, I'm not a tech giant or anything. You know, I don't have the capital, but I mean, the whole e-commerce is getting popular here in Europe. So. Mm -hmm. That's that's how I thought. Okay, uh, the uh, the I was searching out for the best e-commerce platforms, you know. So I mean, Shopify was the was the immediate best idea for that, and uh, and that's that that's how it all got started, you know. Okay, so you first of all like took six to seven months to, like you said, to create these uh, one hundred thirty to one hundred forty uh, pieces of art. And then you cataloged them um, and kind of organized them, and then uh, then you started with all the kind of paperwork around setting up uh, this entity, and then set up uh, an e-commerce store on Shopify. Exactly. I mean, the idea is, is quite simple. You know, it's very difficult to manage both the business side as well as the creative part. So. The creative part was sorted out and I was pretty confident it's good. I like it. I'm completely satisfied. And then comes the, uh, comes the uh, you know, uh, e-commerce or e-shop side part of it. Mm -hmm. And how much time did it take you like in total, like from this beginning, like starting uh, with the idea until like having now this uh, e-commerce store ready? I mean, it was, it was around... Uh, know one one year including the creative part the creative part took me a lot of time 
because it was not easy to kind of have a consistent style across 130 images you really had to perfect it over the over the months and uh, so the creative part say was seven months and uh, the um, the entire building the shopify site uh, setting up the uh, platform and um, figuring out the logistics, uh, printing centers and everything took me another three months to kind of solve it completely. All right. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and you did all this alone yourself? Like, I'm sure like the creative side, uh, you did it yourself, but, uh, or do you do it together with someone else? No, it's uh, it's all uh, it's all completely done. Uh, I just did it all by myself. You know, uh, uh, I had enough time in the mornings and the evenings. You know, I, I wake up a bit early at around four thirty in the morning, wow. so uh, I kind of get around three to four hours of time in the morning to kind of really concentrate and uh, f- uh, do a lot of things quickly. And after work from say seven to nine or so, you know, I, I have another two hours to kind of. Um, finish off things so it's like it's like consistent work of five to six hours every day wow uh, and pandemic uh, the lockdown period kind of gave me the uh, opportunity to do it you know because you, you were just completely um, uh, uh, completely inside you were not uh, you, you were not able to go out much so i thought okay why not let's make uh, use of this period uh, so yeah, this this kind of gave me enough time to fail as much as I can, you know, uh, call as many people I can uh, to kind of get my doubts cleared. Uh, uh, it's about figuring out a million things when you set up a e-shop, you know, like right from understanding VAT, you know, how to apply for a VAT ID, how to register for tax, getting your store ID, um, getting your um, Keshav's conto set up, mm-hmm. getting your PayPal, you know step by step and and also kind of building the whole shopify site i mean it uh, it 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 seemed overwhelming but you know if you're consistent and you you start uh, you know meddling around i'm sure like you could get your way through it it's not really complicated it seemed complicated but as you as you kind of start uh, working working through it it's it's easy yeah 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 getting up at 4:30 is uh, is pretty impressive i i hope <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but that's uh, very uh, five to six hours of work every day. Oh, that's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, it, it, it was manageable, I should say. I mean, like uh, the creative part was fun. I didn't. I was not stressed out at all. But once it came to the entire uh, setting up the shop, it was really stressful. I should be honest about it. Uh-huh. It was not easy. Uh, it's, uh, and um, you know, ever since the creative part was over, and uh, getting back to a proper routine is, is not easy. I'm still, so I'm still kind of figuring out a way to kind of get uh, get everything in place, you know, and uh, and and uh, have a proper schedule and routine, you know. Yeah. But I think it will happen. It's a matter of time, you know. You start understanding. You start making, um, uh, you know, understanding yourself better as you go through the process. Yeah, yeah. So you said uh, you told us about how much time it took you to set this up. How much uh, of capital did it also uh, did you have to spend for this? Till now, roughly, I've spent around four hundred to four hundred to four hundred fifty euros. Um, the um, I mean, like I tried my best to kind of minimize it. So uh, I mean, here to kind of uh, set up things in Germany, uh, there are a lot of things that are easy, and there is a lot of things that are a bit uh, difficult. Uh, so since m- mine was an Einzel Unternehmer, basically it's a sole sole proprietorship. But to kind of figure out which legal form I come under to kind of start a e-commerce site was uh, was not. Uh, easy for me um, i kind of went uh, it was a it was extensive research there is this company called firma.de which uh, kind of is quite helpful they have a lot of uh, interesting blogs and articles which helps you uh, learn a lot about it and also the ihaka and uh, institute of Freiberuf. Uh, these two institutes uh, really kind of uh, uh, kind of help you to get a lot of information about uh, whether the activity that you do come under Freiberuf or it just comes under Gewerbe or if you have to uh, register under commercial registry and so on. So, I mean, uh, it was a lot of phone calls. It was a lot of uh, reading and uh, research, which uh, helped me uh, 
uh, would you say understand all of this then once i had a complete uh, idea of everything i had a one hour or one and a half hour session with a tax consultant who kind of helped me organize everything properly so for this i had to pay around 150 euros this was the uh, initial investment so the idea was to kind of make sure that i have all the knowledge and I ask him all the specific questions i need so uh, yeah this 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 is one thing that i would really recommend people you know do a lot of research i think a lot of material are available so you don't you know, spend up to, to so you don't spend too much money to kind of hire a consultant or a, or a firm to kind of do all your work and the second thing was another 100 and 150 to 200 euros to set up the shopify site i got a, i really bought, invested some money in buying a very good team you know because uh, i was particular about uh, about the looks of the team and the also the functionality of the team so i i spent around 150 euros and another 50 euros for the domain registration and uh, and for the servers and so on okay. so overall 350 to 400 euros roughly all right so you did not use firma.de for the tax services you got the tax services done by a tax consultant exactly so i mean this is where i uh, i some way feel uh, it's better to do a lot of research and get as much information as possible and just use consultants when it is required uh, this is an input that i would give because like uh, every consultant does a free consultation with you you know Mm -hmm. they have a half an hour consultation uh, free, uh, which is free so you could call them up and kind of uh, tell them hey uh, this is what i'm planning to do and uh, and clarify your doubts and uh, and once once you do five to ten calls with different consultants your doubts are all cleared then you know what exactly to be done and you do it okay yeah, yeah. But so I mean, like uh, all these information are available online. I mean, it's a bit of research that needs to be done, but I think it's possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the creative side itself. Uh, so creating the art. How? How? I mean, I can see them on the on the on, on your store, but uh, it's it would be interesting to know how do you actually create this art. Uh, it's it's completely digital, I should say. You know, it's a it's a digital mixed media art series where uh, I use various digital tools, right from an iPad to various digital softwares like Illustrator, Photoshop, a bit of Rhino, and also a bit of visual scripting for to do it. And at times, I also resort to traditional analog tools where I use a paint and brush to kind of develop certain in interesting profiles and get a personal touch to it. So it's a it's a mixture of all of this. Where at times when I really need a personal touch to a particular uh, stroke or something, I draw I draw I draw it manually. I scan it and bring it up into Photoshop or Illustrator. Then I kind of try to imitate the effect which I was able to develop manually and I try to kind of implement it dig digitally. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's a nice mix of both, but I should say it's mostly digital, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So that was the fun part of it. Okay. But when the people order it, they get like a, a, like a not the digital thing, but actually like printed and framed perhaps. They, exactly. They get a digital print of it. They get printed in a particular uh, high quality uh, art paper, and the, it gets packed in a packed in a cardboard uh, cardboard box or a tube, and they get delivered and uh, and they could print it them then and they could frame it themselves. You know, okay. uh, so I mean the the choice of frame is, is different from every person. Every everyone wants to frame it differently, so um, the framing is up to them. There are people who wants to who want to kind of just stick the art print on the wall directly. They want to. There are certain people who wants to frame it, uh, uh, you know, uh, with different materials and different styles. So I mean, the framing is up to them, up to the up to the people who are, who wants to buy it. And this this part about packaging and you know sending. So this all this logistics of this e-commerce you manage it yourself uh, currently i work with um, uh, work with a print on demand service uh, they are uh, they are an international print on demand service based in norway but they have uh, they have printing partners all across the globe 
so basically um, my print uh, once uh, once my customer orders uh, orders a print uh, orders my art online the order gets tan transferred to the nearest location uh, where the customer is located so it gets the order gets transferred to a print shop very close to the customer so it gets printed there and there and it gets delivered so i mean the idea is also to kind of reduce as much shipping time as possible so far this has been working well there has been around 10 orders till now and uh, it has been seamless so uh, maybe in future uh, i would i would uh, in another one or two months i would want to print it myself get get my own equipment and do it because the uh, even printing is also a form of art and it's and it's really fun to print your own art see it and uh, sign it and also add a special note and send it to end customer i really i am really looking forward to do uh, do it and it's a, it's also a really personalized touch that you could give uh, to your art and also to your end customer yeah i understand yeah i agree but it's also interesting to see that there are such services out there that let you do something like this um yeah makes life easier for artists like yourself right totally totally i mean like i was amazed about the kind of uh, network they had it's almost like uber for art prints you know it's basically uh, connecting all the printers under one sing uh, printing shops under one single uh, platform so it was quite interesting to see how uh, technology kind of has really uh, brought down the complexity of a, of an e-commerce business yeah could you please tell us what is this website called or platform called it's called gelato g e l a t o gelato.com it's uh, it's also called gelato api service so basically they have an integrated api service which you could connect your shopify website to it's basically an app uh, which they have developed and you could add this app to your shopify website and everything works seamlessly from there on great okay okay uh, one minute okay um and since you've launched uh, launched your brand, how has the response been so far for you? The response has been good, I should say. Uh, more than happy, I should uh, I should say. I mean, uh, a lot of good responses, personal messages in Instagram, uh, Facebook, and, and LinkedIn. Uh, it's overwhelming at times, you know, when 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 you when you get good uh, replies from people. But in terms of sales, you know, as I said earlier, there have been 10 sales till now. And I'm sure like uh, it will take some time, you know, till it kind of really organically grows. Because everyone who is wishing are, are, are your close friends and family and acquaintances. And for sure, they might, uh, you know, they, they wish you good and they wish you well. And this is where um, your real, uh, the real uh, idea of doing a business or, or, or an e-commerce thing comes in. Because the, um, I mean, uh, the they might not be really interested in yoga or or the particular form of uh, the product that you sell, but they really like appreciate your work and the art style and everything. But uh, it still needs to be taken and spread to the people, uh, to the right people, you know. So yeah. that's where it gets a real uh, mileage. Yeah, I mean, you've just started out, so I think it will also take a little bit of time, and um, yeah, it's. Uh... Or ten is already a very good number <laughs> to start with. <laughs> ten is a good number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, what are your plans in the future? What do you want to do next? I mean, a plan for me in the future is that I really I like this art of creation. You know, um, I really want to keep doing it uh, besides my day job, uh, and also kind of put myself out there and keep. Uh, doing more art number one uh, but for this year I re I'm done with the art for this year the creative period for this year is over now the idea is to kind of learn a lot about marketing this is the next step you know for first you did the art the second one you set up the entire e-commerce thing and, and the third one now is to understand how to put yourself out there uh, learn uh, learn a lot about uh, sales marketing you know like uh, understanding how to reach out to people and so on you know this is this is an ocean by itself and and, and it's exciting at the same time uh, uh it's also going to be a lot of tough days where you know you don't get the results like the like what you what you imagine yeah yeah so that's this the is thing, the, right? 
Mm. Exactly. You know, I, I was just wanted to say that's the thing with being like a Einzel, a, a, a single uh, owner or single founder. You have to kind of wear different hats uh, depending on, uh, yeah, the task. Exactly, exactly, and and it's it's almost doing like a doing like an MBA, you know. <laughs> I mean, you learn you learn every single thing, you know, that you don't learn in an MBA. You might learn it theoretically, but here, uh, you know, you 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 get to do it. I mean, that's the exciting part of it, and doing it in a country where you don't know the language fluently, you know. that's that's another challenge and yeah. I, and i enjoy it honestly it's it's uh, uh, you know there are there are days where you we have sleepless nights you know thinking about how you're going to solve this how you're going to work this out and you uh, and there are days where you kind of reach reach your uh, goal and and you're happy about it and uh, you look look forward for the next challenge so i mean the ride has been the journey has been great and um, and uh, is lots to learn i should say definitely uh, there's so much that i should learn and and keep improving and i'm um, and i'm currently like um, like networking and one thing i should also mention in the podcast is uh, one of the previous uh, podcasters who came in your show vishwatesh has also been helping me in a lot of uh, a lot of things i mean that's a good thing you know that's how uh, you connect with people and uh, it's it's easy it uh, it's better to learn it from people who have already done it so uh, the kind of uh, vishwath has really helped me uh, kind of close the learning gap on a lot of uh, legal issues about uh, understanding about uh, um, data and shows at clarong and so on and so forth uh-huh. so uh, that was quite a quite a jump i should say he uh, he literally saved me a months of a month uh, month of research ah oh, that's very encouraging for me to hear that you found uh, someone who did a podcast here oh yeah uh, I- that uh, he had managed to help you that's great uh, very nice for me to hear i mean he he was quite approachable you know it that was quite nice that you reached out in a lot of other platforms and uh, facebook groups and stuff and i kept seeing uh, seeing the post of vishwatesh and i watched the entire uh, po- podcast and i quickly reached out to him through his through his email id and it was quite helpful i should say and he is also equally happy that he was able to meet another person who is in a similar journey um but in the early phases and uh, i think we we get to talk about a lot of common topics now yeah. so that's that's really cool yeah yeah i mean i uh, yeah it's very interesting what you are doing i think i i haven't heard of similar stories yet but maybe uh, in the future i will um yeah and i'm also on on the other hand very interested to know more about you i mean you have a very interesting background uh I don't personally unfortunately know many people who don't have an IT background. Um uh, yeah, so could you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh yeah, could you tell sure. us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. I come from a, a traditional South Indian family from Chennai and um, and yeah, like you know, it's typical of any uh, South Indian or even most of the Indians like Uh, they have an IT background. All my brothers, my relatives, everyone had a had a strong engineering background, and they work in uh, in Fortune 500 uh, tech companies across the globe. And uh, growing up, I was quite sure that I wouldn't want to end up being being the same. You know, I was quite creative right from my young young age. I used to draw a lot and. Um, and that's where uh, i was interested in a quite a quite a different set of uh, mediums i was interested in photography film making art architecture then um, that's where i realized okay let's uh, i uh, i really wanted to pursue architecture because i some way felt my father being an uh, civil engineer and a project manager it would be give me a good base you know to kind of uh, express myself creatively and i had someone who i could uh, talk to about in family so uh, that was his starting point and um, after finishing architecture i was working for a year in bangalore uh, as as an architect and then i uh, decided to do my masters but when i did, when i so when i was thinking of masters i was think i was thinking of a place where it ha- where uh, i get good connection to uh, architecture and culture where i get exposed to really good culture so i was uh, my obvious destination was europe 
and I, I was really interested in uh, the Bauhaus movement in Germany, mm-hmm. which is really known for its efficiency, minimalism, and so on. So I I wanted to search for a course which had a good blend of art and architecture. So uh, uh, so I decided to choose a course here in the Städelschule architecture class in uh, in Frankfurt. The Städelschule is one of the most premier inst- art institutions in the whole world. I mean, it's it's one of the best uh, across the uh, across the globe and is really famous in, uh, in New York and in the East Coast in the US. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people who have studied art in Stilschule have uh, have become uh, have gone on to become really good artists. That was that was one of the major ideas for me where uh, I thought I could uh, I could do my uh, architecture. So I came here for my masters, and I got to uh, rub shoulders with one of the best architects and artists in the world. And and uh, one of my key aims was to work in this firm called Uhan Studio. It's in Amsterdam. It's uh, it's one of the best architecture firms in the world. Uh, and uh, he eventually was also one of the professors in my in my institution. So I was lucky enough to I should say I was lucky enough uh, to kind of work with him for a year. and that kind of really set my career path in architecture here in here in germany so i came back and i started uh, working here with hen architecture here in germany so i've been with them for the last 4 4 and a half years and um, and 3 uh, years before uh, i started my uh, rekindled my interest for art and i started working on my art uh, from then on so this is the uh, long story short you know so um uh, yeah Ah, that's very interesting. Uh, yeah, that you kind of followed your interest and your passion, and uh, it has led you so far. It's very inspiring. Yeah, yeah uh, totally. It was it was quite a quite a journey, and happy I'm where I am. You know, uh, I've made a lot of mistakes over the over the over the last ten years, but I mean, uh, I mean, no regrets. Honestly, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> so you uh, during the day you work at the, as an architect and uh, aside from work you are spending time building this brand further that's also yeah yeah i mean um, it's i would i wouldn't still call it uh, you know a business yet because it is just taking off it is just a it's just a, a simple hobby which is getting translated into something exciting and uh, it would be it would it would not make justice if i call it as a business when uh, when uh, when there are actually people who are slogging and creating a a huge business you know this is nothing honestly you should i should be honest about it but i'm i'm positive that it will it will really uh, launch off into something really interesting which I, which i would be very happy about yeah mm-hmm. um and yeah what would you think uh, would be your advice for people who are looking to f- follow your footsteps i mean uh, in terms of uh, selling art or in terms of the ent- the entire entrepreneurial journey i would say in the, i would say i would give more importance to um, the entrepreneurial journey you know uh, first of all like the idea is the idea is really important and once you have the idea it's about the business side you know Uh, a lot of people uh, there's a lot that you could learn about uh, about economics about finance about uh, uh, about sales i mean these three uh, fields uh, teach you a lot you know mm-hmm. and uh, once you kind of understand it and you can uh, you know you can do a lot of things you know you can influence the world around world around you and it's also a great feeling you know to have something for yourself and and see uh, something that you created is being used by someone else you know someone likes it and some they use it that's the exciting part of it so the most important thing for me is that uh, for artists is that is yes, create the art uh, create the art is, is just 10% of what uh, what your journey is the remaining 90% is putting yourself out there and uh, that's not going to come easily you know it's the most difficult thing you know even to do a post on instagram or facebook it's not easy because there's a you, you got to write about it you got to kind of uh, use the use the right hashtags post it at the right time and you know reach out the reach really reach out to the right people and and so on this is just uh, 1% of what uh, the entire process is there and there is so much to it and um, and also like so much to you know uh, figure out so uh, 
doing the art or doing uh, do creating the product uh, group product it is just 10% of it and the 90% of it is is the actual uh, you know uh, taking the product to your in consumers home you know understanding logistics understanding how delivery works understanding about how vat taxes work you know that's one of the best knowledge that you could get because at the end of the day uh, to kind of have a successful uh, business running uh, you need to make it profitable profitable in the sense where you you at least um, break even uh, you know you kind of meet the cost that uh, that you spend money that you are able to reclaim out of whatever you sell so and uh, my major uh, input would be to kind of do as much as much research as possible talk to as much as many people as possible uh, the the romantic idea of creating the art or creating a product is is is, is good but the 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 work following it is is the most important part of it yeah that's a very very key advice uh, very interesting yeah yeah thank you uh, thank you very much shankar uh, it was really really great uh, talking to you and um hearing all about uh, your work and uh, about yoga and art thanks a lot uh, paras and uh, and i mean like uh, what you do is is great work and uh, i'm happy that i will be able to uh, help you in some way or the other and uh, and i wish you great success in kind of reaching out to more and more and more people and i mean you have already influenced my life by connecting me with vishvatesh i mean that's that's quite an influence i should say you know uh i mean i i really hope uh, you know the the kind of content that you produce kind of reach a lot more people and uh, and help their lives you know this is just my wish and, and and all success to you too yeah thank you very much i'm really very very happy to hear that thank you thanks a lot manas that's all folks thank you for listening Remember to subscribe to our podcast and check out our blog on indiatogermany.com. See you in the next episode.